Okay, this is uh, the next episode, ep episode 14 in Ephesians. I just want to go over something here because the Spirit of God has sort of quickened something to me. And, and I just want to make another video of, straight off the back of the last one and just talk a little bit more about this amazing person called the Church. The Church, the Ecclesia, is a spiritual person. It's not an organization. It's not an institution. It's actually a spiritual reality, a spiritual body. And um, I just want to go through before I move on from this because I, I just feel that it's on my heart. And I want to just go, first of all, again into Ephesians here. And then I also want to look at the book of Revelation about this. And Paul says here in uh ephesians 3 and verse 9 paul talks about that it was given to him to bring to light for everyone what was the plan of the mystery hidden for ages and i've already talked about that, that the mystery was something that was hidden over in the old testament and even before that it has been hidden for ages <clears throat> and it was hidden in god who created all things god kept it within his heart if you like as a secret so the the this whole um revelation this whole longing of god to have uh the church the 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 ecclesia as something that he could express himself in on earth he had it hidden in his heart in a past eternity um and he and in the and in time right up through the old testament times and right through and then it's given to this man paul paul the apostle to begin to unveil it and uncover the mystery so that we can see it and he says here you know that's through the church the the ecclesia that the many multifaceted wisdom of god might now be made known it's going to take this corporate entity, it's going to take a corporate body functioning for the manifold wisdom of God to be made known. Uh, you see, the manifold wisdom of God is, is being no, made known through, through teachings and preachings and writings, of course, yes, but that is not enough. The manifold wisdom of God may, needs, needs to be made known through the body and this is why this whole division between the clergy and the laity between the pastor and the congregation between the staff and the congregation is a, a sort of a false division i would even say it's, a, it's an apartheid uh, because um the manifold wisdom of god is made known through absolutely everyone that's in the body of christ Everyone has their uh, equal capacity if we can open our eyes to see it. Um, so you are actually no inferior to me. Not that I'm anything special. But you you actually convey as much of, of part of God's wisdom as someone like Bill Johnson or Heidi Baker. And actually they would agree with what I'm saying because they're on this this wavelength of what the spirit is trying to say and this needs to be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places you know it's interesting there was a guy in, in the book of acts and he saw some demons being uh, cast out and he tried to do it um one of the sons of Sceva and um the demons basically jumped on him the person and beat him up and they said look we know paul but who are you but you see the principalities and the powers will take notice when when the whole ecclesia rises up the prince of the palities and the powers have already been defeated but they're able to still sort of function and we cannot deny that they're they're, they're not they're of course they're functioning they're functioning in today's world, but they're able to get away with some of this stuff because the ecclesia has not come into the, the fullness of manifesting the multivaried wisdom of God. You see, when we all can rise up into our place, and it's not just about 
what you do during the church meeting or within the church program, all of that has to shift. We need to come through in this sea change to get away from this whole idea that we go to church or we're part of a church. No, we're part of the, ch the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the body and the bride of Christ. And yes, of course, we gather together. Gathering together is absolutely crucial. But our link is actually not to do with having the same label. We go to such and such a church. Or even our link is not even to do with um, we go into the same building on a Sunday. Now, that is, that, I don't want to diminish that. But our link is a spiritual link within the body of Christ. And then Paul, you see, Paul, um, in his apostleship, one of one of the big things about being an apostle for Paul was that he he was a person who worked along with the father to to father and mother the the ecclesia. See, Paul was almost like a mother for the church. In a spiritual way. Yes he's a man. But he actually uh, brought mothering and comforting into the church. And he, he did this and he complimented the role of the father. You see he says that the church has come from the father. He says you know that uh, in, in chapter 3 and verse 14. For this reason I bow my knees before the father. From whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named, from whom this ecclesia is named, the, the father of the daddy of the church is our papa. We have got our DNA from him, we have been named from him. And see, the function of Paul, if you like, on earth, and by extension, the function of the fivefold ministry or the function of the apostles is really to father and mother the ecclesia. It's really to develop and bring up this spiritual entity in the way that parents bring up a child. And, and what really, you see, the church, the true church, the spiritual body doesn't necessarily need organized. It needs parented. It needs nurtured. And that's what one thing that Paul did was he, he nurtured the fledgling church. He nurtured the ecclesia he nurtured it with love with the milk of love he nurtured it the next thing that happens i'm just going to pick out a few different things here the next thing that needs to be done to the church is it needs to be carried and nurtured and it's given birth to upon the earth if you like it needs also to be named and identified and that's what paul does here in ephesians he's he gives a name to it he identifies it as being um, the father's child you know the thing the thing when you give a child a name is that you give it an identity as part of the family you know my son's called Jacob Hill in fact he's called Jacob Stephen Hill so the 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 Hill surname means that he is part of my family I, I have named him he's got an identity his second name is his dad's name that's an identity and he's also got his own identity and one of the things about fathering and mothering the church is not only to nurture it and feed feed with the milk and, and the food and to comfort it but also to name and give an identity to it and this is what Paul is doing this here he he is actually saying to the Gentiles he has given them a name as as part of the father's family because they could easily think that they're inferior to the Jew. But Paul is actually naming and identifying them as part of the family, if you like. In some ways you could say the Jew is the firstborn child. Uh, um, and then, but then the younger child, if you like, is the Gentiles maybe. See, my two children, Jacob and Jessica, are both fully mine and Becky's. They've got that identity they're they're two different people obviously but they're equal in status they're equal in value so we're nurturing them we're naming them and identifying them and the next thing that needs to happen in the church is that um uh, and this is what the apostolic does it protects the church 
to father and mother uh, a child the child needs to be protected that is one of the key the key responsibilities if you like uh, from childhood on is to protect the child from harm from basic things like even falling or dropping it or something or but it's to protect the child and and there's an ongoing responsibility to protect the child and and you see the ecclesia needs protected and that's the true role of apostles too is to rise up and protect this this body this spiritual person who is the church and then um, the other thing that needs to happen is that the child needs to be taught and developed it needs to grow it needs to flourish it needs to be stretched and developed in order to grow and that's another thing that the ministry is meant to do that the the fivefold ministry if you like is meant to develop this spiritual person called the church and you see this is all uh, comes up to a certain point it brings the church to a certain maturity and then she is handed over to Jesus as his bride. You see, the Father is using ministries within the church to grow the church up into a beautiful, mature young woman so that she can be given to Jesus that he can marry. And she is his bride potentially, but in reality that has not yet happened because the church right now is in a place where it needs to be nurtured named identified protected and developed not into some sort of a slick organization that that gets um thousands of views on instagram but into this spiritual body that is able to hold the fullness of who god is and i just want to turn here to the book of Revelation because in Revelation 21 John the Apostle on Patmos says he saw the holy city he has this prophetic vision of, of, of the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God prepared as a bride adorned for her husband you see John is seeing in a prophetic vision the very same thing that Paul's talking about the bride is something that has been built from heaven. It's come from God. It's fathered by the father of the whole family. It's not built from, from the earth upwards. It's, it's developed in heaven downwards. The identity of the church is, is, comes from the father giving her identity. And she comes down as a heaven from heaven, out of heaven from God. And she's being prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. The whole apostolic work, if you like, is the preparation of the bride from, from childhood, if you like, right up to maturity to be um, someone that, that can be married by her husband. And, and you know, John goes on in um, verse, uh, uh, verse 8 of chapter 21, the angel comes to him and again he says to John, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb, the Ecclesia. The Ecclesia is a person. She is a beautiful daughter of the Father that Jesus is in love with. And Jesus, if you like, is waiting for her to really be married to her so that Jesus and the Ecclesia can be together manifesting the future of God. And who knows what's going to happen after that. It's, it's incredible. It's sort of mind-blowing that, that us as humans, that the ecclesia is lifted up into a place of equality, of, of complementarity with Jesus, the, with, with Jesus Christ. That's what it says here. And it says that the, the, the angel caught, carried John away in the spirit to a great high mountain, he took him really to a place of spiritual perspective. This is what the Great High Mountain talks about. It's a prophetic perspective that is able to see the big picture, this Great High Mountain. It's able to perceive the breadth, the height, the depth and the length. That's, it's really the similar stuff. And then what John sees, he sees the, the holy city, 
Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. And and basically, Revelation goes through this. But just to finish off here, um, this little section, because I don't want to get distracted away from Ephesians, but the holy city, which is then measured in the breadth, the, the length, the height, and the depth, the holy city that John sees is something that is able uh, is come to the place of fully manifesting the manifold wisdom of God. You see, the, when the manifold wisdom of God comes to maturity, what actually it brings is the bride. Yes, but it brings the city, the the area of governance where love can govern, where love can actually govern, uh, and govern the principalities and powers. The principalities and powers, um, the the bride, the manifold wisdom of God is going to be manifested through the church to the principalities and powers. And the church uh, is, is needs to be nurtured up into that place of maturity so that she becomes the holy city. The city that can actually rule and reign and can, and can govern the universe can govern the cosmos so i just wanted to put that out there this little video just again uh, underline things uh, before i move into the next chapter of ephesians in chapter four I, I know this is heady stuff but i think we need to uh, sort of understand a, a bit of who we are in god so I, i'll see you the next time